Hello, everybody. How are you? Howdy, y'all. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. Yes, I was watching Emily earlier, and now I got a little of her twang. Aw. See, but she didn't know you were watching her. <laughs> That's because I was cutting paper. <laughs> uh, I'd like to say hello to Mama B. Hello, Mama B. And Mary Brewer and Mary. Lori. You don't have to echo everything I say. You know, if I wanted to echo, I could just do this. Oh, I wish you wouldn't. <laughs> and let's see. Kim Marie and Helen and Joyce and Joy. Howdy, hey. y'all. And Diana. Can't forget Diana. We got a packed house tonight. Uh, let's see. I am just checking uh, the, uh, yeah, I'm just checking the, the stream, making sure the stream health is good. If you guys have uh, any, uh, if you guys have any uh, issues with the stream, just throw it in the chat room and I'll do whatever I can to fix it as it happens. Hey, Moo. What's up, Moo? Aw, Mama's going to be right back. Good. Let's start without her. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so wrong, so wrong. <laughs> we'll be starting in just a minute or two. Uh, I guess we'll wait until mom's going to be back. Hey, Pam. Andrea. What's up, Andrea? Hi, Kelly. Yummy. Come on, mom. You can do it. <laughs> You can do it. Hey, Pam. Didn't see you slip in there. I saw her slip in there. <gasps> That's what she said. Well, while we're getting going here, uh, going to show you what we will be attempting to make tonight. Hopefully making tonight. Hey, Andrea. All right. We are going to be doing paper beads. Paper beads are pretty. They're shiny. And from a distance can almost look like glass. Um, these were some of the first ones I made. This one was actually the first, as you can probably tell, because it's a little, little wonky. But, you know, handmade. What do you expect? You know, to me, it adds a little character. Uh, then there's a nice little purple one, another little green one. And I was sitting there thinking, you know, something is just kind of off. Let me let me change the size of the paper I'm using. I like those. Don't get me wrong. But I was looking for something more like that. And how that it is. And I keep going out of the light. Yes, but you do. It's so, more of a Pandora looking bead. And that is what I was striving for. These definitely are nice looking, but they're, you can tell they're, they're more, I don't know, is it boho or whatever that's called that style? And I like those, and I have plenty of paper cut to these dimensions, and I spent a lot of time cutting paper to this dimension, so... Oh, like the last three days? Yeah, yeah that's a lot. Yeah, shush. <laughs> <laughs> we, we were up until midnight last night, and it's because she was just sitting there cutting papers. So, uh, Mama B says we can get started, so let me be uh, the one to welcome you to our, uh, our, our live stream for Epiphany Craft Studio. This episode is proudly brought to you by Tito's Vodka. No, nope, they're not a sponsor. She just needs alcohol to be able to put up with this guy. But don't worry, I'm not touching it until I know I'm done with sharp, pointy things. <laughs> not good. Hey, little C. Hey, Carrie, how are you? You have been in my thoughts, dear. I, I know it's not easy. Yeah. If you need anything, we are here. Uh, I know, you know, we're just art buddies and stuff, but uh, we know what it is like. So, uh, yeah, we're on Facebook. You've got us listed. So I uh, hope you stick around. Maybe you'll get some uh, comfort out of tonight's show. We're doing paper beads. Yes. 
And here is a smattering of what I'll be using. Um, first and foremost, you need something that you're going to be wrapping the uh, paper around. Now, the original idea I got from the Frugal Crafter, um, can't remember her name, something Wyrick. Can't, Lindsay, maybe? I'm not sure. Can't remember. But the Frugal Crafter. Uh, she was using, I'm guessing, thicker paper than what I'm going to be using and was saying, oh, you need like a size 9 or 10 knitting needle. Well, I don't knit, so I had no said needle. Uh, she also said, you know, she uses um, bead cores. I don't have those. I do, now that I've gotten into journaling, I have eyelets. So I thought, well, I'll use those. So, uh, didn't have any embossing stuff. It, it, this was a wonderful uh, time for getting into paper beads because I have wanted to get into uh, embossing because of all the stamps I have. So, it was a good excuse to get some. So, went to Michael's, got some just regular, straight up, old fashioned paper journaling eyelets. And they're about 3 16 in size. They're a little bit different, but not by much. And I love the case that they're in. I am definitely keeping the case because it's just awesome well it helps that you can you can open it with one hand yeah if you need to which i tend to forget to take them out when i go to need them then i was like well since i need, need the knitting needle got to get over in that department happened to turn around and i saw um these eyelets over in the sewing department and they look like little flower petals on one side the other side will be your standard eyelet now, not sure how well these will work. I haven't actually busted into these yet. And, you know, you don't have to even use eyelets. I've seen plenty of people when they roll paper uh, beads, they don't put eyelets in. They don't put bead cores in. And, you know, if I run out of eyelets and feel need to uh, make paper beads, I'll just do it without the eyelet. I like the eyelet. It gives it a finished look makes it seem like it could actually be glass because why else would you have an eyelet in it? But I like it. It helps protect the paper. I think it will give it uh, extra stability when you beat it too. Yeah. Yeah. Could. It might. Uh, and these beads are good for, you know, dangles, necklaces, bracelets, I was watching earlier someone using paper beads like these to do a bracelet. They were using the elastic, um, I don't even know what it's called. I even told myself, remember what, that, what that's called? Because A, you can mention it, and B, if you ever want to make yourself a bracelet, that would be more up my alley than wire. Uh, but now I can't remember what it's called. Dexterity. Is that the word? That's coming from Moo in the chat room. No, I don't. I don't know what the uh, rubber stuff. The it's like a elasticy beading material. Oh, uh, okay. Um, I don't know. Of course you wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, uh, thanks. And uh, we'll be using, as I said, embossing using the Versamark. Now, I'm the type of person that I like since I don't know a lot about the stuff I wanted to get the better bang for my buck. So I started doing a little research on this type of pad, ink pad. And, you know, everybody is so in the Tim Holtz and he has embossing pads. So I started reading reviews on Amazon for it. And it was like nine out of 10 reviews People were complaining because they would get it, open it, and it would be totally dry. Oh, wow. They get it. It's dry. They get the um, re-inker for it, and it's goopy, gluey. It's okay. 
well, I'm not paying the Tim Holtz price for something that is dead from go. So kept looking around and I saw this and it has gotten pretty good reviews. It's worked well for the four beads I've made so far. So not going to complain there. Wasn't looking to get Tim Holtz. I, it's not that I don't like the man. There's nothing <laughs> wrong with. I don't like the man because he's too damn high maintenance. It, there's nothing wrong with having a brand and selling it and making money. You know, don't we all wish we could do that? But looking for, I wanted something clear. I wanted something that would be nice and shiny. And this was the biggest um, container of all of that that I could find. So I'll be using the ultra thick embossing powder Ranger. I, because I am clumsy and tend to knock stuff over and it makes it a little easier to scoop than to dip your bead down in it and then possibly get uh, contaminants in your embossing powder. Went and got a little Tupperware container, put some in there and Away we'll go. Helen and a lot of people in the chat room seem to be raving about the Versamark. They say that it works great. Helen says she's had hers for 10 years. Goodness sakes, girl. So uh, she wants to know how much you paid for it, though. Mine was actually on sale at Michael's for half price. So it was like five bucks. Holy hell. That's great. Yeah. So <laughs> definitely get it if you can find it on sale. Yeah. So, Yeah. But so far, this has worked really well. I Thumbs up, Tim Holtz. Thumbs up. So we'll put that out of the way. Um, haven't There's tried that it. Subaru. Yeah, well. <laughs> haven't tried it yet, but you know, who doesn't like a little, little glitz in their, in their attire? So I'm going to try incorporating some glitter. I am trying this one because it's the only one I have that's actually clear instead of being some color. I'm not trying to take away from the bead. I want to add to it. So I'm going to try this. It'll probably catch on fire <laughs> knowing me, but we'll we'll give it a go and see what happens. Helen wants to know how much the bottle of snuff is. What bottle of snuff? Snuff. I'm guessing she's talking about the bottle you just had in your hand. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, Helen. You'll have to reiterate. He'll, um, I don't know what you're... Oh, Lori's saying you can actually use glycerin to re-ink it. And for a certain upcoming project that we will be doing in the very near future, which includes a huge giveaway, um, we actually have an entire gallon of glycerin. And that was a wonderful double entendre because it's huge and... Two ways, That's what she said. size and because, oh, wow, but I digress. Hey, so, that's what she said. <laughs> I also am going to be using, put it on the right camera there, button with boys. I put it on the camera. Boy with buttons. All right, fine. I, I wanted to see the pretty papers. I'm not over there yet. But the papers are in there pretty. Just enough. All right. Uh, using a wooden skewer so that. When I am rolling it on the ink or glue, whatever it is, back and forth, getting it covered, I'm not gunking up what I'm making them on. And because metal <laughs> gets hot faster than wood does, I don't necessarily want to burn my hand when I'm heating it up with the heat gun to melt the embossing powder. I do do two coats of the embossing powder. It just helps add a little bit more um, shine. It it gives it a little bit more stability. Um, so yeah, that's that. And a short, sharp, cutty stuff. Paper towel for glue squeegees out when you're putting in your eyelets if you're doing that. And blood spray. Yeah, probably. Uh, using this glue because I love this glue and it dries clear and it dries quick. And I'll use that for taping the uh, paper and for putting in the eyelets. What are the metal thingies? Uh, 70 acres studio wants to know these. 
thing, these metal thingies or these metal thingies? Now we wait for 30 seconds. Sure. <laughs> uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the metal rod thingies, what are they? The metal rod thingies. These are knitting ne needles. Knitting needles. And those are size five, right? These are size five. Five. Because yeah. of the, we stood in Michael's and I had to get Art Bitch to help. <laughs> figure out what size knitting needle to use uh with the size of eyelet so, so again three these sixteenths are three sixteenths and five uh, and we got US a size five. five now you may need to play or adjust that a little bit depending on how thick your paper is so that that's where it can get a little <laughs> fidgety Mama B says the round metal thingies. I know what knitting needles look like. <laughs> Those are well, eyelets. You should know what eyelet eyelets look like too. I would think. Yeah, you know, these are just regular. The recollection Michael brand. I guess, is that Michael's brand or I don't know. They're Hobby Lobby, all I think. over. I don't the know. Place. No, those are Michael's. So th that's what these are, and that's what these are. These just happen to have a flower design on one side. That's all. Get that out of the way. Um, before I get into cutting paper, just to show you, I've been a busy little beaver. I got these are cut to the original size that I was trying to use, which gave me the longer, less Pandora ish looking ones. So got those, and then once I figured out, oh, let me try changing the paper size. Yeah, I went through and cut up some more, but to they're tapered to the well. There's two. My beads consist of two strips of paper. We'll get into that in just a second and that's how you get the pandora style um and mama b wanted to know uh it, were we using the eyelets to make the pandora style beads the eyelets are primi pr primarily decorative at this point they do provide stability but they're decorative yeah to me they give it a little bit more of a finished look and it also helps to protect I'm trying to find one that you can see all right Try and try. All right. Like, I don't know. I don't know how well it's going to show. But this one, even though I think this is the best looking of the beads, just because I like this style better, but I do like the other ones. Anywho, it's like trying to pick your favorite child. You shouldn't, but you kind of do anyway. You can't really see it because, well, but that edge where the eyelet ends all the way over to the side is paper. It's just straight uncovered paper. Um, so this eyelet pretty much is just decorative on this bead. It's, it's helping protect the core paper to keep it from bending. So if you're using a wire, if you're putting it on a wire for like a necklace or a bracelet, it's going to give you a little more protection from that wire constantly rubbing against the paper one reason to use it to me it also gives you the finished look that you would get if you walked in and spent however much a pandora bead is i'm sure they're not cheap this on this paper because of the way it was cut it actually will cover the entire rolled edge of the paper so if you had this in your hand and you're looking at it it would be like, okay, is this polymer clay? Is it paper? I don't know because I can't see an edge. So it's up to you. You don't have to use eyelets. I like them. Um, I, I have them. I'm going to use them. So it's up to you. Yeah, because you know what? As a matter of fact, Bob Ross has a really good statement about this. Don't make mistakes here. We just have happy accidents. There you yeah, go. I'm, I'm always doing accidents. Not always happy, but... All right, so type of paper I'm using is the 12 by 12 
and I have it too buried. It's in those books where you can get all the different designs, and they're usually like 20 bucks, and they're really only worth the money when you can get them for like 40 or 50% off at Michael's or Hobby Lobby or something. Which we did. Uh, and they, they are just full of a lot of different backgrounds. Now, the one thing I did notice in the couple of beads that I did, it really doesn't do much as far as the pattern, but it does give you the different colors coming through. So if you don't necessarily have to worry about what the pattern is, be more concerned about what are the colors. Hey, I don't mean to stop you. I'm going to let you finish, but we've got a uh, request to read this comment from your sister, Helen. Uh, she says, Carrie, if doing multiple layers of, uh, uh, yeah, let me, let me, no commas. Okay. Carrie, if doing multiple layers, comma, a melting pot is way worth the money. It stays fluid longer so you can repeat dip, dry, dip, dry. So uh, we might need to consider getting a melting pot. I don't know. I'd be worried about getting it in the a uh, whole hey that's beads. what she said hey, hey. i'm really gonna hide that fucking ipad from <gasps> oh my god and yes, i said f i hate that thing <laughs> i hate it and his little sounds pardon my french can you tell how aggravated i am i'm sorry anywho <laughs> all right it's not like you can even hear it you don't have cans yeah, on. but when i get the Hold on, because I'm playing some rando sound clip. Uh, uh. <laughs> this show is so annoying, dude. <laughs> it's so annoying. Gee, thanks. Uh, I've told you, I hate soundboards. And you even added to it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the paper is cut into strips obviously now you start with it's just straight this one is three three eighths straight cut and then your bead will also use or my bead however you want to roll it you don't do it this way um you take and you cut another strip of paper, but it is a half inch, and then you cut it into two, but diagonally. So, not that they'll match up because they're two different sheets of paper. Maybe they will. So it originally was a strip like that, kinda. And then I cut it on a diagonal from corner to corner which gave me two and then you'll roll this is your base once this is rolled and you get the end glued you take it off whatever you're using to roll glue this end down where that other seam was and you roll it till the tapered end that gives you the rounded effect even on these beads it'll give you that rounded as I drop it, the rounded effect. Some that I've seen only use the tapered paper, so it ends up being uh, elongated and kind of, um, it, it really doesn't have that shape to it, but I'll show you. The paper cutting can get a little tedious, but it's also kind of real, kind of relaxing, especially if you're watching TV that you don't actually have to watch, but you can just kind of sit and listen to. Because um, I I did this last night while Mama B was streaming. Look up, watching her bead, and today with Emily watching her do her stuff. And time goes by so fast doing this too. Doesn't realize you don't realize how much time's gone by, so or how much paper you actually have cut. So we will do this one. 
just to show you. All right. So it's going to be hard for you to see the measurements, but that's all right. Take my word for it. Trust in carry. That is three eighths. And what I do, just to kind of keep it, try and keep it as even so I'll have the same number of the base as I do the tapered, I'll do two of those. And then I will do the half inch, which is the one that will get cut diagonally into the tapered strip. Because that gives me two so right here once i cut this one into the taper i'll be able to do two beads and then rinse repeat until you've gotten through the whole sheet which i'm not going to bore you with because i have plenty already cut now we're going to open up oven two where you'll find that we already have the casserole already <laughs> made mm, no not yet so this is where my OCD tries to kick in because I try and make it like perfectly cut and I've had to so just let go of that notion and it just what happens happens. Uh, using a clear ruler I know would make this so much easier but I don't have a clear ruler so... Use what you got. So you're going to want to leave a little tapered end. I try and leave myself, I don't know, maybe a sixteenth of an inch. Just enough for... I'd say about an eighth of an inch. Whatever. I'm not good at measurements. Just, it gives it enough that the ruler can actually hold the paper down while you're cutting. And it gives you the taper on both ends. See, not perfect. Don't care. <laughs> I'm so trying not to uh, get fixated on this paper being perfect. So Little C says uh, you can buy quilling papers already cut and use them for making your beads. Yeah, I know. And I can also set up my scan and cut with a template to cut it for me. But... <laughs> There's something therapeutic about doing yeah, it, the, it the hand way. I, I have quilling paper. It's smaller. Uh, it's really narrow. And I don't know. I PJ even said, you know, why don't we get quilling paper? And I was like, no. <laughs> I want to do it myself. So it, it gives you something to do. It's I'm not trying to be a bead manufacturer and try and get out as many of them as I can. It's more of being able to, Hey, that's a pretty piece of paper. I'm going to cut it up instead of, okay, well, what quilling paper do I have at hand that I can use? <laughs> hey, Gail. Hey, Gail. Hey, Crystal. Crystal actually has a joke <laughs> about women and measurements, <laughs> but it's more of a visual. So, <laughs> Yeah, I think I know that one. <laughs> I think I know that one. And you All know, right. it's time for a celebration. Gail's actually here catching alive awesome. for a change. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Gail. We're happy to have you. I only call him PJ here because that's what he's been called elsewhere. Otherwise, off camera, it's Patrick or Sweetie. Or that's, Splinky. Or... F face. <laughs> sure, you won't say it now. <laughs> the other one slipped out. You, you hey, pushed hey, me into the it. The iPad is over there. I disconnected it. Thank you. Because you apparently don't like my skills. No, so. it's not that I don't like your skills. It it just gets to be too much, and people aren't here to hear that. Okay. Hey, are you done cutting? Or take a vote, and if they like it, you can put it back. I could be wrong. You know, I'll tell you what, yeah, if you guys 
want to send me a comment, send me an email. <laughs> e- uh, it's happymail at epiphanycraft.com or just hit us up on Facebook and, uh, you know, let us know. Do you want the sounds? Do you not want the sounds? Do you not want to see me? Do you want to see me? I mean, because I, I only got the camera for myself because y'all said you wanted to see me. So oh, I, I bet now I you're regretting you. that, knowing <laughs> what I look like. I don't care if they see you. I don't care that you talk. It's just <laughs> the soundboard. That all right? I, I don't know. Well, that's why I said that's fine. Put that's it fine. to put it to the 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 vote because if they don't mind or like it, do it. I don't. And I think Gail is even more awesomer than and than than I thought thirty seconds ago. <laughs> We're wearing pseudo matching shirts. <laughs> Cheers, <Twinsies>. Gail. <laughs> so now that Carrie is done cutting for the evening, she can consume her adult beverage. Wah. And oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I make high octane beverages when we're low on uh, uh, your cranberry juice. That was a toe curler. Oh, God. Gail's actually seen the Moody Blues twice. I am a mm-hmm. huge fan of the early Moody Blues stuff. Like I'm talking like earlier than Nights in White Satin. Like like Ride My Seesaw, great stuff. All right, I digress. This is not my show. This is Carrie's show. So uh, back oh, to you Carrie. Mean, you mean I can craft now? Yes, you can craft and go. <laughs> All right. So what you're going to do is you're going to take one of your bases and one of your messed up <laughs> tapered ends and I got eyelets out so I always forget <laughs> mom's dealing with the same thing with rum and her eggnog mm. it's more rum than eggnog mm. yeah well this is supposed to be uh, vodka cranberry juice and lime just a dash of lime and I think it's just uh, vodka with a bit of pink dye and no lime because all i can taste is vodka hey whose fault is it that we don't have uh cranberry juice yours well you're the one who went to the store last you knew we needed it at the time we did not need it so ha anywho all right now the one thing i i haven't like mastered yet is getting the perfect base roll from jump it takes a little fidgeting um, when you get this part finished to make sure if you, unless you're not using eyelets, uh, then you can just glue and go and keep, just keep on trucking. But when you're using an eyelet, once you finish this, this first roll before you glue, you're going to want to take this off and make sure that A, the eyelet will fit in. Or make sure that it's not too loose. So it, it can take a little fidgeting, but it's nothing major. It just a little extra. And you're just going to roll and roll. You can straighten the edges. It doesn't have to be perfect. At this point, you're just getting it rolled around. And I'm holding my arms out. I can't I can't do no more. My neck and shoulders cannot handle it. Okay, well now you're centralized in the camera. Kind of. And ta da your first strip of paper. So we're gonna take it off of there. We're going to mush in the end so it's even. Maybe even pull it a little tighter. Hey, Lori, to answer your question, the original cut was three-eighths of an inch. Yeah, it's going to depend on, A, what look you're going for. It's going to depend on um, how big of a bead you want. It's going to depend on um, if you're using eyelets or not. Uh, So, you know, the first paper that I tried, I used the same measurements that I saw in the Frugal Crafters video when she was going over it, and that was the first cut was a half an inch, and then the paper that gets cut in your taper was five-eighths. 
And that those were the first ones that I did that gave me the more boho-y type of bead. And that works fine, but it and I like it, but it didn't it didn't look as good as I wanted it to. So then I adjusted the sizes back. Now so, I have to ask. For you know, for the person that's not in the know, aka straight guy over here, uh -huh. what's boho? Bohemian. Oh, like the rhapsody. Okay. Yeah, that's that's the lazy way of saying it. Boho. Gotcha. Like Soho. Now I understand. <laughs> All right. So there's. Always have to watch what I'm. There's. I haven't glued it yet. We're going to see if the eyelet that I always drop will fit. A little too snug, so I'm just going to let go of the paper a little bit, or a lot, <laughs> and grab my other. There it is. Ah, Kiki is married to an alcoholic, so uh, yeah. Sorry, we, we I will not mention that. All right, so have both eyelets in. Still not glued. It's more just to see that I have the right size hole there. Um, I had to let the paper out a little bit, especially to clear out the center of the bead so that the eyelet would go as far in as it could. So now that we know that that's right, we can hit this end with a little bit of glue. You don't need a lot. And I, this seam isn't as important for the glue drying clear because it will get covered up. But if you're gonna use a glue, you might as well use the same glue all the way through, so. So there's that, doesn't take much. And that glue is awesome and already dry. So I'll take my, Eyelets out so I don't lose them. And we've got our base paper rolled and glued. So to do your tapered, if I would have cut it correctly, this would have been a square end and this would have been the taper. But because I kind of slipped and it got a little wonky down here, you really won't notice it because once you wrap it around, it'll be buried anyway. So you're going to start at the seam that you just glued. You're going to use a little bit of more glue. A little bit of more. Glue is good. Yes. And you're going to want to get that on there. Give it a second to want to stick. And then on this roll, you're going to want to try and keep it as centered as you can, especially once it starts tapering. So slow and steady on this part certainly pays off. But you want to keep it as centered as you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. I keep telling myself that. Hmm. And you're just going to keep going. And I like to do this with it being just in my hand instead of on like the knitting needle or anything. Because I can guide the paper a little bit better. Hey, Carrie, yeah. for those who don't know what glue that is, primarily me, because I'm trying to look up the tip for Arlena, um, what uh, brand is that? That is Art Glitter Designer Dries Clear Adhesive. Thank you. All right, it didn't quite center, but we can fix that.
All right, so you got your little tail sticking out here. A little bit of glue. And you're going to tape that. And you're going to let it dry a minute. Have a good night, Carrie. Night, Carrie. All right, so there is. If I can get it to here. Do it the smart way, dum dum. There is our first bead. It's pretty. And like I said, you can't tell <laughs> that that used to be flower print. You can just tell what colors they are. So, again, don't stress over what the paper looks like. Just think about the colors that are on the paper. Unless you're making super huge or super wide beads, then you probably will see more of the pattern. But for these little ones, it's more about the colors. All right. We will leave that right there. So what we will do now is my favorite part, because I like playing with the uh, embossing powder. Yes, we know. <laughs> <laughs> and we heard the schoolgirl in you come out when you <laughs> mentioned it earlier. I like it. P.S. That makes me happy when you get happy. <laughs> All right. So just put it on whatever you don't have a problem getting a buildup of uh, embossing powder and stuff on, which is another reason why I don't use the knitting needle. And you're just going to roll it. Roll in, roll in, roll in. And because it is a slightly tapered bead, you might have to kind of tilt it a little bit to get the sides. Then use a little handy dandy scooper and sprinkle. I try to get a good coating on there just because. Hey, Mary, the second strip is same as the first strip. It's three eighths inch. No. But it's no. tapered. No. What? All right. The second strip is a half an inch. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm wrong. Hence me saying no. <laughs> I'm used to being no. wrong. So it's a half an inch and it's tapered to about uh, an eighth of an inch on the low Camera. side. I'm aware. All right. So. And I give it a slow spin, kind of like a rotisserie chicken, <laughs> just so that the bead's getting a little heat. Hey, Wanda. And you're going to want to stop once you don't see crystals. If it just looks smooth and clear, you should be good. Otherwise, you start cooking it and it bubbles, which I kind of like that, too, because it's fun to watch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then while it's still hot and tacky, you're going to, or at least I go back and I hit it with the second dusting. And then come back over. And this one won't take as long because the heat gun's hot. And then you gotta wait for it to cool down and solidify so it's not sticky or you leave fingerprints and it's hot and it burns. Don't ask me how I know this. <laughs> yeah. We've got some comments about your heat gun, you know. Oh, it's the baby to Mama Bee's. Yeah, Mama Bee's <laughs> got the heat cannon. 
Now, if you're interested in this Wagner heat tool, as it's called, uh, or heat gun for the less PC folk, uh, there's a link in the chat room for it. It is by Wagner, and it's a really good tool. And like Mary said, um, it can cool off kind of fast. Like if you're, I don't know, maybe watch TV, talk, and don't realize what you're doing, and it's too cool, and the second coat won't stick, you can hit it with this again. And then put more embossing powder on it. I, I'm stingy, and I'm trying to get this to last forever. So I try not to hit it more than I have to, and that's why the lid goes right back on it. Hey, if we can get 10 years out of it, I'm happy. <laughs> Especially from a $5 half-off purchase. Exactly. It's almost there. And then once I take this off of ye old stick, we'll go ahead and glue our eyelets in. And then once we do that, we'll, we'll see if anybody has any questions. Yeah, I I did I like the little arts and craft uh, heat guns, but I don't trust them to last more than a minute. So, you know, I like Mama Bees, but I'm not trying to strip the paint off of the house. <laughs> I'm dangerous enough with the torch I use when I pour. And even with this heat gun, I've caught myself numerous times pointing it too directly, both of them, the torch and the heat gun, mm -hmm. at my monitor. And so <laughs> I, don't, I don't need the extreme of Mama B, but I, I knew I, not to get one of those um, little craft things even though they're a little easier probably to hold but. well here's a fun fact anything that says craft and tool in the same sentence don't get it go to a home depot go to a, a, a lowe's go to any uh you know like home improvement center and just get something off the shelf if you need a glue gun you're going to get a longer lasting glue gun from a home improvement store uh that doesn't say craft and you're probably going to pay less too unless of course you get mama b's heat cannon which was 80 bucks and if you do like i just did where it actually adhered to the wood just warm it up a little bit it'll pop off yeah and andrea you said can i use a hair dryer on hot carrie um we can go get your hair dryer <laughs> you probably could i wouldn't I, I haven't tried we can try he's gonna go get my hair dryer we'll try it to the rescue. we'll try it on the next one so here we go glazed and purdy and so we will let me close up this powder i'll end up with it everywhere because I'm good like that. There goes the bead. All right. And glue. Now what I do for the beads. And again, another reason I like this glue. Is because it does dry clear. So even if you get glue smush. From putting your eyelets in. And you don't get a chance to wipe it all off. It'll be clear. You won't see it. The... Blue, the last blue bead I did, the one that I liked the best, actually, I didn't get a chance to wipe all the glue off, and you can't even see it now. So, but everybody has their preference. And, you know, Sometimes you just have to try stuff, see what you like. Because the first time I ever saw that glue, I was like, what difference does it make? Why do you have to spend that much for glue? Yada, yada. And then I got some and tried it, and I was like, okay, I get it. <laughs> I want some. All right. All right. And if you see to the side camera, you'll see that her Remington hairdryer is uh, already set to high and ready to go for the next bead. And I don't even know why I even have a hairdryer anymore. I never blow dry my hair anymore. I don't have time for that. So there we go. Eyelets in, glaze on. And I love that paper color. Beautiful. 
And uh, uh, out of the light. There you go. So even though it was flowers, <laughs> it just looks like uh, a darkish red and gold, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Now, Wanda also pointed out that you could go to Harbor Freight. And don't get me wrong. I love Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight for what? Uh, for the heat gun. Oh, yeah. Now, what I would recommend for Harbor Freight more than their power tools is uh, their hand tools. Their hand tools are dirt cheap and they're amazing. Now, that being said, their power tools, especially heat guns, are very cheap. So if you want to try it out, sure, go for it. They're cheap enough where if they do die prematurely, they're not going to be much of a financial loss. So, yeah, Harbor Freight's definitely a uh, a, a good thing to do. Uh, Tina, welcome. Uh, well, we won't mark you tardy for class this time, but <laughs> that's your last warning. Just kidding. Um, the eyelet that you I You know, used, she's she's been here for a while, though. Well, she said she was late to class. So I'm just going over what she said. Okay. Uh, the eyelets that I that that beat was and the ones I've made before are these. They're from uh, Michael's. Not that you have to get them there. Uh, they are the recollections. They come in. The silver, they come in gold. Um, they unfortunately, or if they did, I don't remember seeing them. They didn't have like that antique bronze color because I really like that. Uh, they're about 3 16th in size. And the paper I'm using is a thinner, that thinner... Um, this stuff that you can get in the big packs of paper that's pretty thin. So it works out pretty well. I also have these. I'm getting ready to break into these and we're going to do it on our next one to see how they turn out and look. Right, Lynn. So you, your eyelet, you kind of have to match up your eyelet and your knitting needle or whatever it is you're doing your paper on. They do make uh, bead tools, but to me, I'm not spending all that money on a unitasker that, not that I'll ever learn to knit, so <laughs> technically the knitting needle is a unitasker too, yeah. but I'm not spending that amount of money on a tool um, when I can just use a knitting needle. If I knit it, I would have already had them, so... And while you're going and throwing away the backing, I will say that uh, uh, Helen wants to also mention that if you don't have a t uh, if you don't have a heat gun or a hair dryer or a, your hair dryer won't work, which we will try out here in just a minute. Uh, if if you are really on a tight budget and you still want to do this, a toaster will work. Uh, you essentially put it on the uh, the the skewer or the the knitting needle, and you just turn it when it, you know when it starts getting glossy, and uh, so that should work. Should have known Helen would come up with using a toaster. <laughs> <laughs> she's crazy. Well, she's toasty. Yeah, she's she's. Hey, you gotta do what you gotta do to get out the crafting demon. You know, you you gotta get that release to get it out there. Oh, yeah. So we're going to try our little flower eyelet. Hopefully it'll be pretty. I'm half tempted. So very tempted to do flower on both sides. But then I'm going to be stuck with a bunch of just the plain ones. Which. Oh, for this one, you might as well just go all flower. No, we'll, we'll, I like having matching sets there. <laughs> so, here goes nothing. And again, this one is just really to get it wrapped. You're not worrying about it being centered. You're not worrying about anything other than making a tube. Lynn says uh, that she would drop it into the toaster. And Lynn, <laughs> you and me both. I am you right there with both. you. 
I would so be that person. And uh, Moo also asked if we could use a uh, a a a, a, clothes hair, iron? a clothes iron. Yeah, a clothes iron would I think would not work too well just because you would need contact with it for it to have any good. Now, if it radiates uh, a bit, then yeah, sure. Um, you could try it, but at that point, you could also use the burner from your stove, or if you've got a gas top stove, you can use that at a distance. But then you got to worry about burning your fingers if uh, you or get if too close. Or if anything drips. Yeah. Uh. Or anything falls like it just did for you. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'll just have to remember that's there. I'll get it I'm your art bitch, but I'm not going to try and get underneath <laughs> your desk while you're still there. I appreciate that. On that note, I think I can get around from the back end of the desk. <laughs> it's no biggie. I can wait. See, I don't know. I don't know that these will work. Gotta fidget with it. The center is hitting. So apparently in sewing, You're three... Welcome. Three eighths is different than in paper craft. So I had to open that up a lot to get it to go in there nicely. But let me make sure this side will fit. Uh oh. Mama B's trying to do what you're doing now, and she says her embossing powder didn't work. So she's using glitterized Mod Podge. What kind of embossing powder are you using? The embossing embossing type? I'll shut up, I'm sorry. I just got the look of death. <laughs> you should be used to it, dear. <laughs> no, Tina, it did not start snowing for us yet. But I'm not looking forward to it. It was 19 degrees when I got up. Uh, which one is cheaper? Your bed eyelet. There you go. <laughs> Mama B is using Recollections Embossing Pad and Cheapo Powder. Is it clear? I don't know. That might be something to think about. All right, so let me get this in glued. Glitter clear. What did it what did it do? Did it like bubble up? Did it just not hold it? All right. So the eyelets haven't been glued in yet, but that's what that side will look like. And that's what that side will look like. So, uh, it didn't turn into a clear coating. Hmm. Did the embossing powder, did you overheat it? Did it like start getting real bubbly? Maybe your, maybe your master blaster's too hot or you're holding it too close. Where's my edge? And I'm a dumb dumb. I should fix the edge. Well, no gum gum for you. Oh, no, right? There. Won't get off. 
damn Subaru. <sighs> Muena says it's below freezing there, but uh, she can't do the Celsius to Fahrenheit uh, translation. <laughs> translation, And, you know, quite honestly, neither can I. I know that zero degrees is freezing in Celsius. That's all I know. And I think 100 degrees is boiling. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's, I think that's right. Uh, Mama B's bead is not round. What measurement did I get wrong? <laughs> I'm guessing it was the tapered one. You've got us. I'm guessing you have to start with the thicker side. You've got to start uh, rolling the thicker side in first, and then you want to end up with the little tapered end at the top of the bead. Correct, Gary? Yeah, you start with the the fat side on the tapered, and you work your way to the nub. That sounds painful. Mm -hmm. Damn it, I wish I had a soundboard. <laughs> Seriously, happy mail at epiphanygraft.com. <laughs> Please let me know. <laughs> All right, come on now. Center up. There we go. A little bit better. I'm going to have to start crediting Helen as the executive producer. because She's sitting here text messaging me or Facebook messaging me. Hey, man, read the comment about the toaster bit. <laughs> it's like, heard you. No, no. I love it, though. I mean, that's what the show is all about. If you've got suggestions, let us know, because no one walks away experiencing anything you know worth anything in, unless you learn something and that includes us okay all right so there's number two and we're going to use the remington right yes thank you for reminding you're me. so welcome because i would have looked at why is that there after <laughs> i already I started using the air or uh, gun and drum roll please I need to start picking some of that stuff off here give it to me I've got well, my Leatherman let me grab another one so I'm not waiting alright and rolly rolly get those sides There you go. Good as new. All right, just let it down, please. Thank you. You are welcome. Art bitch at your server. Son of a... <laughs> All right. He'll switch the camera when he gets back. So we actually have a fan of the uh, of the soundboard, Crystal. Kind of worked. <laughs> uh, it's a little chunky looking. Okay. So you can technically do it. 
uh, if that's all you have, but it kind of leaves because I, I don't know if maybe it's my hair dryer, but it seemed like it's only like super hot in like one part of the stream and it spreads that heat out through. No, I'm getting it to oh. focus, but now I can't see what I'm looking at. Uh, so, and you make me lose my train of thought. Oh, like you're blaming that on me. Okay, sure. Thanks. You do it constantly. Why wouldn't it be your fault? <laughs> so, I mean, if that's all you have and you don't want to put the money out, sure. You can, you can do it, but I'm going to hit it. Gail actually suggests doing a bunch of them all at once. It would be more efficient that I way. I know, but it makes me have to wait to use the embossing powder. Yeah, well, that is correct. <laughs> and one thing you might not know about Carrie, you do not want to make her wait. And there's a lot of people in the chat room talking about UTEE. -E. And uh, Lori states that is a uh, that is ultra thick embossing enamel. So that's your enamel, your your mm -hmm. embossing powder. So UT. And look at you stabbing yourself in the palm. No, I was trying to get it to slide down a little bit, but it's not in the mood. Just letting that sucker cool down a little bit. Yeah, that's. Oh, oh, yeah. U T E P. U tip. Maybe that's Mama B's issue. It's not ultra thick. Maybe. Uh, I know I definitely, when I start using that with my rubber stamps, I'm going to want every color in the rainbow. All the glittery ones. <sighs> they had me at embossing. <laughs> hey, Carrie. Yes. Did I mention that CJ's in the house? CJ! What's up, CJ? CJ's in the house. Hey, hey. So, how's everyone today? But seriously, uh, if you guys want to uh, check us uh, out on our website, you can go to epiphanycraft.com. We will be glad to uh, continue uploading content there. We've got, uh, speaking of content, we've got two produced videos that are being uh, recorded, and well, not as we speak, but we're in the process of recording them now. And uh, one of which is a Christmas gift for a friend of Carrie's, a co-worker. And uh, we've also got, uh, and this is the big one, we've got a super special surprise coming up. It's really big, it's really permanent, and it's going to be really freaking cool. So we hope you stay tuned for that. That'll be coming up in the feed uh, sometime before the end of the year. So be sure to subscribe and hit that bell. Now, back to Carrie. <laughs> uh, and Lori says that you can make your own... Um, embossing powder by using the clear powder and add mica powders. That's good if you own a lot of mica powders. Which we do not. So uh, you can either just buy <laughs> and not have to make or buy something and the the only mica and it's not even truly mica powder that I have 
is this type of stuff, the Perlex. Which is really powder good. Powder pigment, which is what I'll be using Friday with uh, Mama B, uh, 70 Acres, when we do our Cranky Crafter show on Friday, um, making Glimmer Mists, because I kind of blew my uh, my budget. So, and you know, Lori, you told us about the uh, the the Dollar Tree uh, eyeshadow. We could not looked, find it. We looked for a good ten minutes. We went through the entire aisle. They yep. had nothing but the cake. Yeah, they had the the cake kind. And you know, unless you've got a mortar and pestle, well, the cake doesn't really do you any good. Yep. Because I looked, I was like, ah, oh, come on. <laughs> I looked through Walmart. Thought maybe one of their ritzy uppity brands would have the loose because it's you know retro oh look at this it's in a powder they didn't have anything nope and then i was like if i had a mortar and pestle i could just grind up my own but we don't have that so that would have been something else to buy and i was just like you know <laughs> it'll, it'll either get glitter which i have some really super fine glitter or it'll be the pearl x because <gasps> Hand me uh, one of the a watercolor, and then also for Friday's show, uh, we went and got the spray bottles. Didn't have them at Dollar Tree. Um, I'm gonna have to. I'm not opening it. Uh, I need to send a letter to corporate on my local do Dollar Tree. They didn't have the spray bottles. They didn't have the makeup. Do they not know that there's a cranky crafter that lives very close to them that they don't want to make angry? Yes, but only on Friday. <laughs> Anywho, uh, for the glimmer mists that we're going to be using, because I didn't want to use um, food coloring, uh, Mama B uses the Sargent brand watercolor concentrate well. I looked at that on Amazon, and they were 30-something for the 8 or 10-pack. I guess it's 10-pack. And it was a good it was a good buy. Yeah, if if we had the the money to throw at it. So, I started looking for alternatives and found this color splash liquid watercolor it's the same thing uh 10 pack and it was 12 dollars cheaper now you might think hey good deal comes with 10 colors i got 10 bottles i got some of the colors that were supposed to i got eight out of the 10 i got dupes i have no yellow no green now that made a cranky crafter crankier because it's kind of hard to make green it's kind of hard to make yellow you know you can make green if you have yellow and blue you're you're kind of sol for that so art bitch got on the phone with amazon because i, did. I tend to have the mouth of a sailor if you were here <laughs> earlier kind of know that um <laughs> i apologize i told you but he called and was like look you know we got 10 bottles we got two dupes we're missing two colors and amazon because they were the fulfillers of this they're like "Ooh, okay um we, well, told, we told them that we were YouTubers and well, we were doing yeah, live. Soon, as soon as we said, oh, we're YouTubers and we need this for a live stream on Friday. Oh, uh, um, uh, yeah, let me get you a refund. Do we need to send this back? No, no, no. You can keep it, donate it, or throw it away. But, you know, we'll give you a refund and, you know, you'll have your money back in a couple of days. Well, so I'll, I'll be doing show without... Yellow and green, which makes me sad. But wah, wah, wah. I'll have other colors to play with. All right, this is cool enough now that I can paint or glue my eyelid on. So I'm supposed to read something for you. For me? Yeah, you can. Uh, yeah, uh, again, this is coming from Helen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Buy some cheap eyeshadow as it's true mica too, and helps. Uh, it, it helps. Uh, it helps to stick. 
and then please read PJ. Mm. Yeah, but I can't find any in a powder form. I really think we just need to invest in a, in a semi-decent mortar and pestle, because then it wouldn't really matter. And, you know, the back of a Phillips head screwdriver and a, a ceramic bowl will suffice. No, because it has to be powder. It can't have lumps in it, or it's going to clog. I am aware of that. And nothing's going to make a cranky crafter cranky if her spray bottle gets clogged every time she goes to try and use it. Well, uh, yeah. Lori, the reason I don't want to use food dye, to me, the colors aren't as bright. And to get them bright, you're either going to cut back on water so you're constantly making it you're constantly going through it or you can get the watercolor concentrate which is very vibrant and you don't need a lot of it and you know if you want to mute the color down to be more of a pastel which is what you would get more so of with the food coloring you just don't put as much in, you know, and I've watched and read because, again, I like to read reviews. A lot of people say, you know, you don't even need bottles this big if you are just a crafter because this stuff will last forever. But a lot of people who do um, teaching or use it with like craft classes, they get the big bottles and they still last them a while. So... Now, on the upside, Walmart did have 97 cent bottles. So, yeah, they did have. Not, I took every last one of them that they had because they only had 10. Yeah. Haven't been back. Don't know if they restocked, hopefully, because I also want to make um, alcohol sprays. Oh, Kiki says the eyeshadow can be melted into a water alcohol solution after mashing up. Huh. Interesting. Now you're going to want to go and get some eyeshadow aren't you no because we have tons of alcohol true more on that coming soon well i have eyeshadow that i bought and wore once and don't ever plan on wearing again because i'm not a makeup type of girl yeah but once in a while it's really amazing yeah, but to see you in i makeup. make up once you've opened it and used it if it sits you should not go back to it because you will get all kinds of crud all up in your eyeball. Yeah. Lori says there is a difference in cake dye and food dye. She says uh, that uh, one is better. I didn't quite. Probably know. the food dye. Yeah. The the Wilton cake decorating color uh, pastes are amazing. So we might want to look into that. Maybe I should stop and see if I can get a yellow and a green before hey, Friday. Hey, now. You know, might as well. So here is bead with flower. Eyelet. Let me autofocus that for you. How about I just manually focus it? Nope, that doesn't work either. There you go. So there's that side. And there's the regular side. It just looks so pretty. And, you know, if you're doing this on a dangle or something, you know, you could have that be your top where the flower petal is, and by the time you put other stuff and it's dangling, you won't even notice the regular edge. Yeah. Oh, wow. Lori says that that's what she's talking about. The uh, the, the, the Wilton cake uh, dyes are brighter and bolder than her alcohol ink pens. Okay. Well, so we're uh, sold. I mean, if Lori, if Lori trusts them, I think we should definitely check yeah. them out. I will do it. Because she's no fool, yo. <laughs> So that almost makes me wonder if I should do like my initial thing. And why does that look like it's already got the backer on it? Because maybe it's already got the backer on it. Oh, it hey now. On there. All right. So that really would look good on both ends. Yep, yep. She wanted me to reiterate the fact that they are bright. Yeah, see? Oh, well. Hey, Tracy! Hey, Tracy. Tracy's in the house. I know. I don't need to do it for everyone, but it's Tracy. So, all right, Laurie, I'll, I'll take you at your word. I'll stop. I'll get 
uh, at least yellow and green, and we'll have a side-by-side comparison on Friday. And we'll see what we see. Yeah, and you can't even... I'm sorry, I'm just sitting here looking at it because it's the first one I've done with these. <laughs> but that worked out so well that you don't even see any of the paper edging at all. So I like it. Plus for that. All right, so now... Okay, now we're getting into a little bit of a, a brand war. <laughs> Crystal uh -huh. says Americolor gel food dyes are even better than Wilton for icing, etc., but they are expensive. Well, see, that's where that killed that one. Because we're poor. And you said expensive, so. But, it, you know, good to know. So if there's a little extra money in the craft kitty. Which there won't be. <laughs> Shh, don't tell her. <laughs> there will be, and he just won't know about it. Damn it. <laughs> we will do some of the original paper that I cut. Can I just stop you real quick? Who here in the audience doesn't know right off the bat, just from looking at her stack of papers that she's got OCD out the wazoo? Why? Because they're all sorted and such. That just makes sense. I agree, but then again, I am OCD as well. You know, you get all your tapers together and the the base papers, and you clip them all together. It just it makes sense. I I am I'm I'm agreeing, but I I just am saying this for the people that are anti OCD, such as Mama B. <laughs> as she, and this is not me making fun of her. This is her words. She is anti OCD. Okay. All right. So now. Another thought I've been having and that can be dangerous at you times. You have a thought? I know, right? Is why do you have to use two papers of the same? Why can't you mix and match? Uh-oh. See, now I really want the, the, the soundboard so I can go, dan, dan, dan. Because, like, this is really suspenseful. I want to see more. So, we'll, we'll put it to, to a group. And we will uh, see which ones we should mix and match. Not that you can see that top one. Uh, CJ is the same way as you. <laughs> which is the only way to be if you're an art and crafter. In my opinion. All right. Counting from this end. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Which one should be the base paper, which is your straight, non-tapered paper? I am putting in a vote right now. I'm saying uh, that we should do seven as the base and then three as the taper. Okay. We'll see what, what the crowd says. And Moo says you should have your ducking soundboard back. Uh, sometimes, sometimes <laughs> autocorrect is a good thing. I'm guessing that was an autocorrect. Thank you. Uh, see, so that's two votes for yes so far that I've been able to actually read. And then your vote for no. Now, granted, your vote has to count for at least 10. I said that, um, put it to a vote. So I don't even get a vote. All right. Well, so far we've got two votes for yes, then. Uh, and, and we'll give you a vote since you're insisting on not taking the full 10. All right. So. Tina's agreeing with you. Seven and three. <laughs> <laughs> well, then. <laughs> Preliminarily. You'll just have to get used to the fact that you can't curse. Moo said that's how she wrote it. She's not doing a carry. Oh, okay. Good girl, Mill. <laughs> it's a slippery slope. Yes, it is, as we saw earlier in the stream. So I, I will just say it now. Um, thank you for letting me have my toy back. <laughs> Y'all, you get tired of it. You gotta let him know. <laughs> yeah, you definitely do. But okay. in, in you know, in the time being, I'm just going to say this. 
There you go. I don't even have headphones in and I can hear it. <laughs> All right. So that one. Even Mama B likes the soundboard. Wait. She also likes when you curse, though. So there's <laughs> that. <laughs> It just slips out. I can't help myself. Oh, it it slips out for me, and we have to get used to the so fact that we're two? not doing a those two? podcast called Prime. Nate, uh, I, I said seven and three. That was seven and three. This is seven. Oh. Okay. And that is three. This is three? That's three. All right. Learn to count. No, I was going with the one <laughs> I wanted, I think. <laughs> All right, so we got that. And we'll put you back. So Moo says, uh, since I have it back, I guess you have to get an extra nice early Christmas gift. <laughs> now, I don't know what the hell I could give you that you'd actually want, because anything I have to give you, uh, you wouldn't want. Hey, that's what well, she said. You can get the not a bomb package in the mail. Not a bomb. Oh, yeah. Well, we've got three of the not a bomb packages. And we've got to wait until payday, which for you is tomorrow. Yeah. So, yes, I will be uh, driving to the good old post office and getting out some happy mail tomorrow. And what the heck? I'll throw a couple beads in. I don't know what you can do with a couple of beads, but I'll throw in a couple of beads. You know you've already sealed it, right? No, I didn't. Wait, what, do you, what mail are you talking about? Those. I haven't sealed them. Oh, they're not sealed. I thought, see, this whole time they've been sitting on the coffee table in our living room, and I thought they were sealed. No. I just really thought they were sealed. What, what do you want from me? And you all wonder why I cuss. Really? All right. So, this is... Yes, I know, Moo. Something slipped out of my mouth that was foul and, and indecent. <laughs> you know, Carrie and I, for the last three years, have done an adult-rated podcast. Uh, not saying that we talked about p porn or anything like that. We just didn't hold back. Like, Carrie had this one thing uh, on, on the podcast called Carrie's Purge Report. Uh -huh. And uh, it was rather enlightening. It was great. <laughs> now, if, you, if you're if you a fan of just unfiltered language, uh, not to say that we would sit there F, 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 S, 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 you know, whatever. No, it wasn't like that. It's just we didn't censor ourselves. There were some very good parts of the, uh, the Prime podcast. Uh, if you want to check it out, you can go to theprimepod.com, but we no longer do it anymore because i gave it up so we had more time for this um yes i know i curse we're getting used to being pc or semi pc or well pg at least that's why when i start to say something and i kind of stutter it's because i'm trying to redact what would normally just come out of my mouth exactly so it's kind of like mm -hmm. okay all right so knitting needle and we'll need that. And I guess we could try. CJ just asked for our uh, happy mail address. Uh, I gave her the address, like the physical address. I don't know if that's what she wanted. Because happy mail address is happy mail at epiphanycraft.com. I doubt she wants, if she wanted an email address, she would have said email. I agree. I definitely agree. Now, my thing is, is what she's going to be sending a bomb? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. These are the things that my mind likes to think because I'm a little off kilter. <laughs> just, just, say it again. I said just a little. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, no, moderately. Moderately. Okay. All right. So. Gail says a couple can make a pair of earrings. You know, you're right there, but we don't have the bear, uh, the, the, the bindings. Yes. And I think we've we got might have you've to actually got the hooks. It came. I I uh, bought some because I haven't gotten to it yet because I want to make my own beads to put on my journal. And but I went ahead and got stuff. And in one of the starter packs, it kind of had like a mix of stuff. So it had like lobster claws and it had um, I I think. I I don't know because I was kind of ooing and eyeing over all of my 
bits and bobs that I got. So I didn't dwell on any one thing very long, but I think, <laughs> I think I did. All right. I think I'm about to get hacked. People are asking for my address and if we have any kids. <laughs> <laughs> I've got two kids, 21 years of age and 17. Yes. And uh yes. That's My it. my my son, my biological his that's My son. son, my just not bio, my non-bio. His non-bio, the 21-year-old. Um because he is my child and by He's me a saying shit. that he is me for the most part, through and through. Uh, every once in a while, his biological father will peek out, and it makes me want to shake him. But typically, he's all me. And that child has been around me. I have never censored myself around him. I have never... Um, I've never said, okay, that's a PG-13 movie, and you're only six. You can't watch it. If it's something he wanted to watch, he watched it. Oh, he was watching Terminator at four. He, you know, but he never cursed. But we always had the discussion of, you know, movies are make-believe unless otherwise noted. You know, you can't fly, you can't take a gun into a, a crowd and just start shooting people without repercussions. You can't. You know, drive up on a sidewalk and have that be cool. You know, you don't say adult words. Yeah. And, and my 17 is the same. My 17 year old is the can same way. I please? Maybe later, but right now I want to talk. Okay. Now you can talk. Yeah. And I think once in his 21 years of being on this earth has he ever said a cuss word. And the one time he did say it, it was so funny. <laughs> and he got this look on his face. And we couldn't... It, it took a lot to bribe him to say it again. But he doesn't cuss. He doesn't... He's not... You know, how they always say it's the media and the video games oh, and not. everything, you know, that make children violent and do things that are bad. My son wouldn't hurt a fly. You know, he doesn't cuss. He's not his mother in that regard. You know, to me, you can do almost as much damage putting that child in a bubble and trying to protect them from what the world is than if you let them actually see it and get to know that this, the, the real world is a lot more scary, a lot more violent, and is actually real. So... Putting them in that bubble, and then when they hit that magical age, whether for you it's, you know, when they're 16 or they're 18 or they're off to college, and that real world comes up and bites them right on the butt, they don't know what to do. No, they, they don't really know don't. how to act. They can't, they, they just, they aren't expecting it because they think everything's rainbows and Barney. You know, so I wasn't, I wasn't going to do that to my son. And he's a well-rounded individual. He has a bad attitude, but that's genetic, and that's me. <laughs> so that, that's not anything he watched. <laughs> hey, hey, Carrie. Yes. We, we have a conundrum. Oh, no. Supposedly, Muena would like to do an uncensored collaboration with us. <laughs> and Helen says, do whatever she wants. <laughs> an uncensored collaboration. Yeah, yeah. That could be dangerous, Moo. Yeah. That could be really dangerous. So maybe we'll have to start an epiphany after hours. <laughs> It'll be like Saturday at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> this, this is scary. I mean, we, we, I, I, we stopped doing Prime just so we would have more time. <laughs> and this is a three-year engagement that we had. Uh, we stopped doing Prime after three years to, to, to have time to do more in the art world. And now Muena wants to uh, to to kind of like uh, do a, an uncensored collab. And I'm like, damn it, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, we could just mark it explicit on the YouTube video, and, and the YouTube Nazis would have nothing to say about it, because it's marked explicit. Yeah, well, I don't know that it's a good idea to mix 
that in with your non or your mix it in with your censored brand though yeah can get a little confusing we might have to start another channel <laughs> i don't get enough sleep as it is <laughs> But yeah, so, and I'm sure my parenting style goes like way well, off you know, the crazy edge compared to, you know, how a lot of people. Well, Gail agrees. But, you know, I just, I couldn't bring myself to lie to my kid, you know, saying that the world is Barney and rainbows because it's not. I mean, turn on the news, you know, how many bombs went off today? How many mad shooters went and killed X amount of people for no reason other than they wanted to? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Moo says, when I lino or lean, uh, lino uh -huh. uh, rules out the window. And Crystal says, I might pay to hear that. <laughs> Uncensored crafting. And Moo definitely agrees. <laughs> Second channel. I mean, I, I tell you, the shows like last night, I had to use my scan and cut. Oh, we were stuff, about to beat that for stuff for um work and let me tell you if if it would have been something that was recorded y'all would have run screaming like your hair was on fire <laughs> some of the stuff that was being said so <laughs> i had i don't uh, y'all don't know you might be releasing a crack in here you oh, don't no. know I think we might have uh, uh, our first guest already, and we haven't even talked about this <laughs> after Cam. Uh, Gail says, <laughs> I'm wearing a faded tie-dye, and, uh, well, she's got, uh, you know, she, she's, she's, she's got the tie-dye, and she likes the moody blues. Uh, what do you think? Now, see, here's the thing about Carrie that you might not know. <laughs> she is not a moody blues fan. I like, like, one song. Nights in white satin. And that's only because it's probably I've I mean he's played Moody Blues stuff and it's just like uh yeah, can we can we please listen to something else now? <laughs> See, I love the Moody Blues. I love the the prog stuff. I love the, like when when you know when the lead singer just starts like spouting poetry. Like and I don't mean like all oh, these lyrics are like poetry. I mean like literal poetry. It's just really cool. And I, I just totally dig it. But uh, Carrie's not into that stuff. She also doesn't like prog rock of any kind. The closest to prog she actually gets is like Sticks, which I agree is freaking awesome. But uh, we've yeah. actually seen Sticks. It was amazing. That's not going to work. Why won't it work, Carrie? Tell us. Because what will, but what, I can tell you why this won't work and what will work. Because this paper and this paper started out to be for the same bead, this paper doesn't taper quick enough that you get to see any of your flat. So well, fix it. I am. By golly. So maybe you should have done a 3 8 to 16 of an inch well, taper. I'm going to take one of my small... Here, as soon as I figure out which one I want to use, I guess. Well, you do that. I am going to do that. And, and, you know, while you're doing that, we can just wait because we've got this. And, you know, Carrie doesn't have her earphones on, so she can't hear this, but she knows me well enough to know damn well what the hell I'm Jeopardy. playing right now. Jeopardy? Yeah. Time's up. And I'm gluing. <laughs> oh, wow. Gail is old school awesome. She saw sticks before they were even that famous. Nice. Yeah. We saw sticks in 2012, 2013? No, it was sooner than that. It was like 15, maybe. Okay. Well, we saw them. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it was. We saw them about two years ago. And oh, my God, they were so cool. Granted, not as cool as it would have been back in the day. But still, 
Like, I love sticks. I, I like, oh. See, and this isn't working either. Well, why the hell isn't it? <laughs> I don't know. Show the camera what you mean. I will. No, but you're not. Said I will. <sighs> you know what, Carrie? <laughs> and just beat the devil out of it. That's really the most fun part of it. Yeah, that's the most fun out of it. Um, Gail wants to know if, it, if I can get in trouble for playing the Jeopardy theme and, uh, it would fall under, not, I don't think it would fall under public domain, but it would fall under fair use because it is such a quick clip and we are talking over it. Um, I've done podcasting on a professional level for, um, about, like I said, three years, uh, I ran a network for quite some time. And uh, that I also dropped that to have more time to spend with you guys. But uh, n there's something called fair use, which basically gives you limited rights to use certain uh, sound clips in, uh, uh, you know, in a public forum like this. We'll glue it. Looks like poo, but we'll glue it. And I'm the kind of guy that asks for forgiveness later. Rather than apologizing before I even do anything wrong. You mean uh, you ask for forgiveness because it's easier than asking for permission? Yeah, that too. Carrie Duffy, soon to be, everybody. <laughs> Give a round of applause. Yeah, the most classic rock band that I ever saw, and this is, I guess, before they turned classic rock. Age wise would have been Aerosmith. Aerosmith. Yeah. They were awesome. It was back in the eighties. Back when bands still sang, you know, they didn't need to lip sync at concerts. Yeah. And he was still young enough to do a backflip off the stage. Oh, those were the oh, Coke Snorton days for for Steven Tyler, yeah. <laughs> so that didn't work as planned. But still kind of nifty. So. Yeah. And when it comes to it, Gail, uh, the worst they're going to do is monetize the video using the copyright owner as the source. Uh, right now, we're not monetizing, so we really don't care. Uh, once we get above the thousand mark, speaking of, if you want to help <laughs> spread the word of Epiphany Craft Studio, share the link for Epiphany Craft Studio on YouTube to all of your friends and crafters. Um, but yeah, no, we're, we're not monetizing yet, so it really doesn't matter. They're not going to pull our video offline because we're using the Jeopardy theme. The Jeopardy theme we're actually using is from 1970. Seven, I think. Uh, so it, you know, by now it's not going to be something that copyright owners are going to be like, oh yeah, you're taking money away from our our pop star, you know, because well, it's not pop music. So uh, anyway, yeah. The more you know, and no, I will not play that sound. I, Thank I you. you're welcome, because I have it on deck. I could play it at any given moment. You know, Gail actually saw Aerosmith about 20 years ago. Ba-doing! Oh, the glue didn't have time to set. Or I didn't put enough on there. Aw, you know what? The <laughs> bead <laughs> fail. <laughs> oh. Alright. Come here, let me fix you. Naughty little bead. Yes. Ew, crunchy. That's what she said. But I didn't play it. Don't look at me like that. Do not look at me like that, woman. I did not play the sound. I just simply yeah, said it. Yeah, and it's like... What? It's something that she she just said. Helen, I love you. She says Jethro Tull has been her favorite since she was 14. And, you know, 
Jethro Tull has been my favorite since about 14, too. <laughs> Jethro Tull actually is coming out with their 40th anniversary remastered edition of Heavy Horses, which is one of uh, the albums I'm not too fond of, but it's still a really good album. My favorite is probably Minstrel in the Gallery. Uh, I'd say Aqualung because it's everyone's favorite, but I hesitate because, well, it's everyone's favorite. So, uh, but no, I love Aqualung. Uh, uh, Mama B and me actually, and and Dad Sanjay, uh, we actually saw a Tull in uh, in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, and it was an amazing show. Carrie, mm. talk to us. What's going wrong? Do you need more glue? No. Do well, you need yeah, a third I need finger? Glue, but it's annoying me because there's embossing powder on it, right? And it's making it hard to. Uh, I have a finger to lend you. That's not going to do me any good, dude. I'm just saying, I've got a finger. Wow, Crystal saw the Beach Boys for her eighth birthday. Mm. That would have been cool. Brian Wilson was such an amazing songwriter. Fun story you might not know. Uh, the, the Beach Boys came out with an album, and the Beatles said, hmm, I like that, but I want to top it. So they came out with Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, to which the Beach Boys said, well, hmm, I like it, but I want to top it. So they came out with Pet Sounds, The More You Know. And, you know, for, for that, I think I have to play it. And you need to redact it because you've spit out that fact before when you were talking about this. I don't think I did it on yeah, your channel, though. Yeah, you did. Because where else would you have said that? Prime? In, no, it was here. Okay, well, you know, if I've spit that out before, sue me. I'm sorry. Dewey Cheatham and Hal will be in contact. I just can't win, folks. I just can't. <laughs> Helen says to the new Miss Carrie Duffy. Woohoo! Yay! <laughs> Congratulations, salutations, and all the great things Yaz are. It's not official yet. No, no. We, so we, you know, I mean, at this point, we're just being lazy about it, and we're kind of broke right now because we're saving up for a house. Uh, we are in the process of getting pre-approved, and I know I told you that last week on the show, but it's really exciting. So I'm going to continue saying it until you guys want to puke. Um, yeah, uh, send hate mail, happy mail at uh, epiphanycraft.com, and uh, I'll be glad to uh, take that into consideration not to say it again. But until then, we're getting pre-approved. Yay. Um, but yeah, once we have the money and the time to take off work, which will probably be in January by this point, we are going to go to, um, yeah, we are going to go to, uh, the justice of the peace and have the deed done at which point I'll be able to wear the ring that Carrie will not let me wear until we get married. And of course she'll get to wear it too. I'm reading the chat room. Huh. What? This bee just did not want to be. Just did not want to be. I'm sorry to hear that. And I'm sorry for your loss, Carrie. <laughs> Show the camera. Honey. I am working on it. Can you not see that? I can see that, but they can't. Well, I can't <laughs> see to work on it if I'm showing them. You know, the more you make me tilt the camera, the more boobs they're going to see. Which I'm okay with because, well, boobs.
But Gail, I want to wear the ring before it's official. I just, I want to wear it. We've been together for 15 years, it's just, it, it, and my OCD doesn't allow me to call her my wife before she's well, legally my wife. Well, wear the ring. But I want to wear the ring, and I want to call you my wife. Is this, like, why, why can't it just be done? It's like, done. Yeah, this bead's going in the uh, reject pile. No, it's not. Uh, yeah, it Let is. me see it. Let me see it. It's all lumpy because the glue still did not want to stick for oh, some reason. Wow. Yeah, no, it 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 definitely. Uh, oh, thank you, Kiki. I've had this sweater 15 years. Easy. It's just one of those comfy ones that don't really care how it looks. It's just comfy. But yeah, you see how it's lumpy. And you know, that was actually mom that said that. No. Oh, yeah, no. Go. Kiki did say it. Look at me being all, like, daft. Okay. Well, uh, yeah. You know what? You've made how many of these beads? And this is the first this one. This is that's... the seventh. Okay. And this is the Unlucky first one. number seven. This is the first one that has been a fail. And it still looks pretty. It just, it's not a bead. <laughs> it's a glossy paper roll. It, it, it had some issues. Yeah, and Heather says, what is... Hello, Heather, cat lady, by the way. What is wrong with textured beads? Well, it's not texture. It looks like it has a tumor or something. It looks like it has a prolapsed anus. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> it's got this thing going on here, which um, I guess maybe I had from it unwrapping the first time. Maybe I trapped some embossing powder under there, so it kind of got weird under there. But the end, even though I glued it again and used more glue, still wanted to pop up. Wow. So, yeah. That oh, one's no. oh, no. See, here's where I come out sounding kind of gay. Uh, and I'm all right with that because I got nothing against the gays except that I'm not. Gail just said, well, do what McSteamy and what's her name? You mean gray uh did on gray's anatomy meredith. and exchange meredith yes and exchange notes that said they were married see here's the thing with that back when shonda rhymes was doing some amazing stuff like before current seasons uh i was a huge fan of gray's anatomy and i even loved uh, private practice for the first two or three seasons before it just went off the rails I love Grey's Anatomy, and I would love to be able to wear a ring and call her my wife. But until it's legal, my OCD will not, uh, you know, allow me to do it. I say wifey, my woman, my girl, my fiance. I, like, I'm not allowed inside my own head to say wife because she's legally not. And it, it drives me up a wall because we've been together 15 years. I want her to be my wife. It's about time, right? Uh, we can wait another 15 minutes. You shut or up, woman. Years, I you mean. shut up. I will sign the papers on your behalf. <laughs> you watch. <laughs> kind of have to be there. Apparently, I have grossed out Andrea by calling it a prolapsed <laughs> anus bead. Sorry, Andrew. <laughs> you know I can't control what he says. <laughs> Would you really want to? Sometimes. I'm still not as annoying as some other male counterparts to some YouTube streams. Stop it. I, hey, I love them just as much as anyone else does. Well, I'm not wasting pretties on this. Oh. Oh, Helen says, I will never puke. I am so happy I'll keep saying it. Miss, Mrs. Carrie Duffy. I'm glad my name kind of has a little bit of an Irish. Well, it's because you are Irish. Ring to it instead of it being like. I don't know. Wait, they killed Derek? Yeah, they killed him up years ago. How the hell? Why would you, why, Shonda, we have to have a conversation. Like, seriously. What the hell's wrong with you? You don't kill off Derek. He was the star of the show. Him and, you know, uh, you know, of course, you know, John Winchester. Ugh. I'm a fan of Supernatural, man. Yeah, you're welcome. 
you know, it's, it's it only just, took what fifteen years of me watching it to get you to watch it. I didn't have time. I was kind of busy. However long I was kind of busy. I was. No, you weren't. I was. Actually, we are doing a DIY wedding. It's just a justice of the peace thing. We will have a celebration uh, probably next summer. So next July. Um, if you guys want to show up, we'll we'll definitely uh, let you know about it on the YouTube channel. Um, you know, we're probably going to rent out uh, the, the bar of our favorite me uh, Mexican restaurant, Habaneros, in Westminster, Maryland. And um, so you guys are more than welcome to come. Just, uh, you know, let us know that you're interested and we'll send you an RSVP. But again, night, Kiki. Oh, Kiki's going. Well, have a good night, Kiki. Mm. I prefer you didn't glue me, Tracy, but well, I get where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> I'd actually prefer that, uh, that that I did glue you. Hey, that's what she said. Hey. And, you know, Muena says, get someone to do a free online thingy and then marry you. Problem solved. Except for the fact that our co-host, Mike... Jenkins gun was uh, actually that person. We had him uh, do the thing to get the paper and be official and be ordained and all that. Uh, but he actually never did the research to figure out what he would need to actually legally go through with the ceremony. So um, we've just kind of given up. I mean, I love Mike. He's a great guy, but I don't know if you know this, but he's got two kids. So there is, there is that. So justice of the peace. It is. That works. Jeans and a t-shirt. That's the way I roll. <laughs> wow. Helen must be a little behind on the video. She says, woohoo, boobies. Boobies are great. They give life to babies. And, you know, we, we can't give life to babies. Well, she can't. And so, therefore, I can't as well. Because, well, I don't cheat around. Um, which is a good thing. Because I don't want to die. Uh, you know, presumably, but uh, yeah, I like boobies too. They're very nice. Mm. Okay. Do you, because you said you wanted the wood pattern. I love the wood pattern, yes. Do you want flowers or regular? For wood, I'd say regular, but that's just me. And do you want silver or the gold? Brass. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hopefully it'll behave. You kind of cut out there, what? I said hopefully it'll behave this time. Hopefully. I'm going to step away from the mic. Please do not go to use the heat gun just yet. I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> oh, so Moo wants your mom to uh, officiate. <laughs> I'm not holding it like I'm about to stab him, Heather. I don't think I was. Could have been subconsciously. But we'll 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 say I wasn't, okay? It's just between you and me. <laughs> All right. Get on. Yeah, apparently I was holding uh, the knitting needle like I was going to stab you. 
Mm, I thought you. I thought that was just common practice. <laughs> Wait a minute. Mama B says I can marry them down at the farm. We were thinking of setting up a marriage location on the mountain for those wanting a wooded ceremony. Oh my God. It'd be kind of hard to do in the wintertime, though. It kind of would be, but except the, uh, you know, the, the... The chickens could carry the rings. <laughs> I don't know that that would work out too well. I think they'd probably peck them to death, but we could try. <laughs> Feather girls. <laughs> uh. Best chickmen. <laughs> what are you looking at? The amount of noise you're making. I'm not making any noise. There is an entire craft audience. That can back me up on this. Hopefully. My ears are more sensitive, apparently, than that microphone. Blah, blah, blah. Did you see what Dadam said? We checked in Ash County, North Carolina. You have to get a marriage license from the county. Uh, I or your mother can get ordains for free on the... Oh, that would be cool. Can you imagine that, though? Do you <laughs> take this woman to be your lawfully married wife? I do a really bad Indian accent. I am so sorry, Dad. You know I love you. <laughs> I think the only thing I got right about that was the whole you. Well, is it part of the... Uh North Carolina way that you have to have a shotgun pointed at the groom or well, that is tradition or arrive in a four by four pickup truck and maybe have shotguns shot when you do say I do. You well, know? you know, mom and dad are gun owners. Yeah, I know. Hell, they could even let you borrow a gun to shoot off yourself. <laughs> Just don't point it at me this time. Okay. You, this time I've never pointed a gun at you. <laughs> You know, Mom, you keep saying that he doesn't have an Indian accent anymore, and I am calling bullshit on that one. He has a very thick Indian accent. It's so much to the point where he, if he's not right on the like the microphone end of the phone, I can't understand him because it's I, I just can't hear him. It's too far away and it's too muddy with Eng, you know Indian dialect. Now, when when I am talking to him on the phone, I have no problem. Night, Laurie. Get some sleep. <laughs> Thanks for showing up, Laurie, and hanging out with us. And I will look into getting that food coloring. Do that. Wow. What? Oh. Supposedly, I should apologize for something. Crystal says. <laughs> oh, for the accent thing. I already apologized. Didn't you hear that part? <laughs> Andrew says you're fresh. <laughs> well, I'd rather be fresh than stale. <laughs> Bazinga. Yep. Oh, good board, it's nine thirty. So it's time for me to turn back into a pumpkin. Hey, I like pumpkin pie. Say I need beauty sleep. I just need sleep. Oh, you shut up. 
Have a good night, Gail. Night, Gail. Thanks for stopping by. All right, why don't you sit there with it? And think about what you've done. I, mean, I just don't want the glue to pop in. Weird that the last one did. Give me a chance to stretch my back. Oh, of course, yeah. I'll give you all the time you need. Pop, pop. You know, part of my contract states that I have to rub your back. Would you like that now? No. Okay. So after the shot. Sure. Well, alrighty then. If this bead, if this bead wasn't for you, I would so try the glitter thing. Try the glitter. I don't care. I'm glitter pro. I'm pro glitter. Okay. Just because I'm a straight male doesn't like a, doesn't mean I like a little. I don't like. Wow, I cannot talk tonight. Uh, unlike any night. <laughs> yes. Just because I'm a straight male doesn't mean I don't like a little glitter in my life. That's what I was trying to say. Okay. Probably be easier if it wasn't full of cheese. Probably so. But you know, I had a hankering. We're going to get zoomed in for this one. Get glitter on the head. Oh, wow. Heather said she had to carry a lamp around a stage during her brother's marriage in India. His wife is uh, from Chennai. Sh I don't know how to say that. Huh. Very colorful ceremony. Yeah, the, the Indian ceremonies are quite colorful. Nothing like being blasted with heat on your arm. But it's all for the name of art. It's sparkly. I don't know if I said this earlier, but good night, Gail. It was great having you by.
Can you? No. In the um, wherever that wood tray is with the little plastic containers. Can you hand me one of the little plastic containers? Is it over there? Oh, okay. It was right behind okay. me. Thank you. Yeah. Oh. You missed one. Straggler. Oh. Hey. Uh, very little bit of the glitter, not much. Definitely not enough to pick up on the camera. Well, I don't know. You don't have it very close to the camera either. I can hardly see it with my eyeballs. Well, put it up there and see if they can see it. After I put the things on. All right, then. The thingamajiggets. What? The thingamajiggets. Thingamajiggets. That's a new one. Thingamajiggers. Yes, but thingamajiggets. Never heard of that. Plural. Oh, okay. <laughs> now it all makes sense. <laughs> yeah. I'm quite offended by that emoji, Crystal. Thank you very much. <laughs> what did she do? She put a really weird looking emoji up on the screen. <laughs> Oh, I missed it. I'm I'm honestly not offended. I, I quite think it's humorous. <laughs> Darn it, I missed it. Well, it's on the screen still. All I see is the weird little face. That's the emoji that we're talking about. Oh, I was looking for something offensive. Well, <laughs> I was only bringing it up because she was like, what the hell was that? <laughs> <laughs> she apologized for it and everything. No, Helen. Well, just me personally, I'll be happiest in jeans and a t-shirt. Or if it's winter, jeans and a sweater. I did the whole wedding dress thing, and I didn't want to do it then. I yeah, I'm, I'm not a suit and tie kind of guy. Now, granted, Carrie looks freaking amazing in a dress, but I've only seen that maybe twice in my life. So, <laughs> yeah. It's just like wearing makeup. It's just like maybe once every three years that she actually does it. If then. So, there is that one, which luckily didn't have any oopsie doodles. Well, and, rather that than a poopsie doodle. And it, I did put glitter on it, but either I didn't do enough or it's, it just died under the heat. I'm not sure. But I'll keep experimenting and I'll get it glittery yet. Hey, it turned out as a bead, right? Yeah. yeah okay. It did. So it's not like a identifying as a cup of coffee. No. Okay. Then I think we're okay. Did it, Helen? I didn't hear it make a weird noise. Did you hear it make a weird noise? I did not hear it make a weird noise. Did you hear it make a weird noise? No, I didn't. Lincoln. I have to ask. Did the you art hear inspector. it? Inspector. Make a weird noise? Art did you? Inspector. Did the heat gun make a weird noise? Goose. Did the heat gun make a weird we noise? We got a tail wag. She said, it "Did not make a weird noise." <laughs> we have dogs, and they are awesome. <laughs> That's my little baby. Yes, who is? That's mommy girl. There she comes. All dug up ear. Yeah, you know, dug up ear. What are you doing? You didn't look at any of the new beads. Come here. Let me show you this one. Get the camera on. Heather Cat Lady says she needs a uh, heat gun recommendation. Uh, you could go with the heat cannon that mom. Uh, got Mama B uh, 70 Acres Studio. Uh, she's got a $79 heat cannon. 
Now we spent about $30 and we got what I just posted in the chat room and well, we love it. So there's that. Yeah. I, I have heard a lot of horror stories about the ones that are labeled for craft use. You know, the thin cylindrical looking ones that are easier to hold in your, well, it looked to be easier to hold in your hand. I, I have just heard horror stories they get them and they die after a month you know and especially if you're going to put out the money that you would for like the tim holtz or any sorry tim i'm no i'm dragging your mud name through the mud again but you know to me if i'm gonna if if i'm gonna put my money towards something i want it to be something decent something that's gonna last more than a minute so Whatever you buy, make sure you have a decent uh, warranty. So, and ours has, I think, what, a five year? Uh, yeah, sounds about right. Has a five year warranty on it. So, yeah. Can't go too wrong with that. Just probably take it back to Home Depot and go, it died. Exactly. And hey, while we're talking about things that don't really mean anything, uh, which we're going to start now because what you were saying means stuff. Okay. Uh, Helen wants to let us know, and this actually means stuff too. I was just trying to be funny, but it did really work out. Helen wants to let us know that Carrie is definitely a professional. She had all those open containers and didn't spell a bit. That's amazing in and of itself. Let me tell you, because <laughs> it, it's, I have to be very conscious because I'm, my mom always told me from when I was little up until now, I'm like a bull in a china shop. I oh, I make a mess. I break stuff. It's So it's conscious effort not to. Yeah, Crystal's saying, I, I'm guessing the lighter under the paper didn't turn out well. Mary, you are lucky, my friend. <laughs> and I love the fact that you were a demonstrator for stamping up. Gotta say, I haven't bought anything from them, like, firsthand, but I have gotten stuff like a Goodwill that was stamping up, never used, and those things are awesome, because I, I, stamps are one of the first things I got into when I was a kid, loved them. If it was a surface that I could get away with not getting uh, in trouble for putting a stamp on, guess who put a stamp on it? You did. This girl right here. <laughs> so yeah. much props for doing that. And I do believe it is time to round up the doggies and get on out of here. All right. Well, um, I, 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 for one, enjoyed watching you make beads from paper. That was something I never expected to be doable. <laughs> Uh, as a matter of fact, when you did your first bead, you sent me a picture of it while I was at work. And, uh, man, I got to say, it was amazing. Even my coworker was like, nuh-uh. <laughs> He's a millennial, so he uses words like nuh-uh. And uh, so I had to actually bring them in the next day to show them. And it was amazing. It was just great stuff. So, uh, Carrie, thank you for showing us how to make paper beads with just a little bit of love and embossing powder. <laughs> and love for embossing powder. Well, yeah, we, we have to have the love for embossing powder. Yep. I have to adjust my camera. There you go. Anytime, people, if you have questions or if there's a different way you want me to try and do beads, let me know and we'll, we'll get her done. Uh, any show ideas that I can afford, there's the important part. Can't afford or already have stuff for it and just don't know to do it. Let me know. And yeah. And we'll see what we can do. Yeah, definitely. Uh, as a matter of fact, epiphanycraft.com is the website where you can uh, go to check out everything, Carrie. And if you want, you can email us those nifty ideas that you want her to do, as long as they're not too expensive, uh, at happymail at epiphanycraft.com. And Heather, on the note that you made about uh, you're working on your stamp collecting. If you come to uh, the uh, Cranky Crafters on Friday and you're in the chat room, remind me and I'll show you what I found at Goodwill. Listen to what I said. Goodwill. 
You'll be amazed. Yeah, it was amazing. She found a lot of stuff. It was great. (laughs) See, now I just spoiled the secret. (laughs) All right, you guys. Take care. Have a awesome rest of your evening. Have a great Thursday and hopefully see y'all back Friday night for Cranky Crafters where uh, Mama B is going to help me make a mess, making some, uh, now I forget what they're called. Glamour sprays. There you go. I wanted to call it glamour and I knew that was wrong. It's not glamour. (laughs) Hey, at least I knew it was wrong. Night, y'all. It's not glamour.